Good afternoon, folks. It's exciting to stand here and introduce my current project, HetraSpark, a heterogeneous CPU GPU Spark platform for machine learning algorithms. My name is Peilong Lee. I come from UMass Lowell. And um, currently, we have four major contributors to these projects, including our faculties from various departments, um, Dr. Yan Luo, Dr. Yu Cao, and PhD student Ning Zhang. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of this research. Um, current technologies reveal that GPU outperforms CPU in the various platform um, applications, such as machine learning, image processing, and also biomedics. So um, dealing with this kind of applications in the context of big data, there are currently some several solutions, which are single GPU solution, GPU clusters, and CPU clusters. There are pros and cons for each of this um, solution. For example, simple, single GPU and GPU cluster has very good data parallelism. However, for single GPU, it's hard, kind of hard to handle large scale data set because of the memory limit. Um, for GPU cluster, it has complexity in data partitioning. For example, we need to have to use MPI and uh, OpenMP. And for CPU clusters, it has advantages of uh, scalability and programmability. However, the single node uh, performance is not as good as um, GPU. So based on this context, our motivation are um, first to accelerate. Um, we want to integrate GPU power into current Spark CPU cluster and to achieve further data parallelism um, to get better performance. And the second motivation is to have a plug and play kind of design. Um, we want to, our current Spark application can choose to enable or mute um, the GPU acceleration. And the, the third um, motivation is to have good portability. We want to um, use existing Spark code port it easily to our heterogeneous platform. So with this in mind, we might want to introduce our architecture. Um, on the top of this slide, you can see these are um, original Spark architecture, which can includes uh, the Spark master and several Spark workers. Uh, our Hatcher Spark enhances this architecture by integrating GPUs to each of this worker node. These GPUs can be locally connected or connected over the network, or even with no GPU on the HetraSpark worker. So the way to enable or disable GPU power is to um, configure in the configuration file. And there are currently three configurations, local GPU, remote GPU, and no GPU. So if we zoom into one of this HetraSpark node, we can see more details about the CPU GPU communication. Um, currently, we are applying Java Remote Method Invocation, aka RMI, to as a method of remote object invocation. And RMI uses object serialization to marshal or unmarshal the parameters. So on this diagram, we have mainly three parts. One is the GPU wor CPU worker, GPU worker, and also the GPU existing libraries. Um, we, we want to start from the left. On the GPU worker GVM, upon calling of the remote method, instead of doing Spark computation, we want to serialize the data and send the data through the RMI um, interface to the GPU worker GVM. And on the worker GVM, GPU, GPU worker GVM, we also do the deal serialization, and we want to do the um, remote method implementation, which is actual implementation of your function. So this HetraSpark K 
can deal with your function acceleration in this way. We call this glue logic. So you can treat the hetero spark as a black box on the left, on the right side. And users need to call their function and get their result back. So upon calling of the my function on Spark Worker, we put the input data to, to check if GPU accelerators are online or and also free. If, if it is not, then we go to the original Spark implementation. If, if it is yes, then we want to continue check if the function is on the accelerating list or not. If it is not, then we go to original. If it is, then we set the GPU accelerator flag busy to get exclusive use of the GPU. And then we send serialized data through RMI to the remote method. And RMI server gets the data and deserialize it to, and then send it to GPU implementation. GPU do the computation and send, back, send the data back to um, the Spark worker. So um, the question is, how can we actually use uh, HetroSpark? There are currently two ways of accelerate your um, function. Um, this we call um, the basic way. We, if you want to use the existing HetroSpark maintain list of accelerators, then you can just treat HetroSpark as a black box. However, if you want to somehow want to build your own application, want to accelerate your own function, then you have to know the details about how to develop your own GPU accelerator. So this is a basic structure we use for develop our own GPU accelerator. First, you have to have your function that want to be accelerators. For example, in this case, we have a acc.java, which contains our um, wanted uh, function. And then we use Java tools to generate the bytecode and also generate the GNI header file for our GPU interface. And then we want to have a kind of intermediate um, Wrapper, live, wrapper function to include the GNI header and to call our existing GPU sources. So we define this kind of um, wrapper function and compile it with the existing GPU library or source code to generate a dynamic link library. So now you have this dynamic library. Upon calling of the acc.java, now you just need to load your shared library and do the acceleration on this GPU library and you will get the output. So you may, want, you, may, uh, you may want to ask why we use RMI. Um, to be honest, we compared with uh, some se several solutions about the remote function invocation. invocation. Um, RMI, have very secure and faster and lightweight advantages. However, it's only Java specific. Cobra as another alternative, which means common object request broker, um, are language independent. It's pro, but it supports no garbage collection. And SOAP as a web-based service is very heavy and slow. And the other solution is to use Spring Plus Java message parsing, a uh, message, um, Java message uh, service, um, which can provide you very simple interface. However, um, it requires learning curve and also actual dependency. So that's why um, for our use case, we want to choose RMI as the, the solution. And we even um, calculate the overhead of RMI on our architecture. So the RMI overhead is less than 500 milliseconds with two megabytes of data if connected locally. And in most of our use cases, we just want to use local GPU via the PCIe interface. 
So here comes the um, performance evaluation. Um, the benchmark we used to test our platform is uh, logistic regression and also k-means. We used data set list on the, on the slide, um, which contains a very medium-sized um, big data for the training and also for the test. The system we use is Amazon EC2, um, which contains M3 extra large nodes and also extra large GPU node. As you can see from the performance comparison diagram, um, the, on, the, on the third column, it is Spark with 128 number of cores. And the fourth column is our Hatter Spark platform, which contains only eight cores plus two GPUs. And you can see these two results are very comparative. comparative. So if you increase the number of GPUs and also number of CPUs, you can get obviously better, better results. And that's the, that's, I want to end off my um, presentation with a conclusion. To achieve these three motivations, acceleration, plug and play, and portability, HetraSpark did very good in these three areas to enhance Spark by accelerating machine learning libraries with GPU power. And also, it has zero interference with the original application if you choose to mute the acceleration. And it's non-tedious work to pull the existing Spark application into Hatcher Spark if using the maintained libraries. Our future work on the roadmap is we want to um, have more powerful serialization uh, solutions, like we want to use advanced um, serialization techniques for the communication, and we also want to use to simplify our program interface by in introducing some um, platforms. And also, um, we are keeping spawning the, the maintained libraries for your accelerator, and we want to touch the deep learning algorithms um, uh, on the next step. So that's basically what I want to talk about our work. I'm open for any questions. Yes, please. Are you open sourcing any of this work? Yes, we uh, definitely want to open source, but currently we have unstable um, source on, on the test, so I will make it open as soon as possible. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, there's another uh, way to interface GPUs with maybe not Spark, but at least Scala, and including Scala in a cluster. That's the work of John Kenny at Berkeley. Are you aware of this work, and do you have comparative benchmarks? And if so, will you do them before releasing open source? Yes. Um, actually, I, I'm aware of the project you are talking about. And um, um, currently, we are doing this way because we think um, this way is very lightweight. And we use, actually, you can see the logistic regression at key means. We use the same kind of um, data set to test our benchmark. However, I don't have the um, um, the the architecture the bitmap project used to compare with. So on the next step, I'm going to compare with it. But on this um, performance evaluation diagram, we can see um, the acceleration is very, uh, very good. And uh, I believe we can uh, have more um, like joint work together. And um, I'll show the result. Yep. Thank you. Uh, two questions over here. Uh, first, how did you, w which parts of k-means did you, which parts of k-means did you accelerate using the GPU over here? Uh, and uh, I guess I'm, yeah. Which parts of the k-means algorithm did you accelerate using the GPU? And then also, so every time I need to accelerate something, I have to compile C code and wrap it around J and I and put it in a cluster. Is is that? Is my understanding correct there? So to answer your question, um, 
the function we, we want to accelerate is the uh, k-means train function that contains the, the whole logic. And um, to answer your set, second question, um, I want to say there are currently two ways to accelerate your application by using HetraSpark. The first is to use the existing libraries. In this way, you don't need to manipulate with the GNIs and also the RMI interface. So you just treat HetraSpark as a black box and give it um, the input and get the output. However, if you want to somehow build your own applications, then you need to know how we um, design in this way, and um, you have to follow this pattern, the design pattern. Yeah, there are all machine learning libraries. So we are trying to have our MLlib maintained library supported by HetraSpark. And also we are doing um, deep learning algorithms like neural networks and uh, RBMs.